I talk, you listen. Welcome to my one-man panel of madness. Hey everybody, this is Dr. Geo Who, and welcome back to our Countdown to Star Wars special. And, uh, well, I'm calling it a special, and if you don't think it's special, well, that's your problem, not mine. Anyways, this segment is going to be about the two standalone movies that they did, and then later I will start with my uh, ranking of all the Star Wars movies from number eight all the way to number one. So, let's start with Solo. Now, I'm trying to do this chronologically, I guess. And I think in the grand scheme of things, you know, you have the prequels. Then, um, if I'm right, I think you have Solo and then Rogue One. And Rogue One kind of leads into um, A New Hope. So, I'm going to start with Solo. So, Solo. Yeah, you know, that movie, I just remember that it just had so much going on with it. Like, there were these directors, but then these directors were fired. And then, I mean, even the star of the movie had issues. I mean, there were so many things going on that... As Han Solo would say, I don't have a good feeling about this. And I really didn't. But I still went to go see it opening weekend because of Star Wars. And I've always liked Han Solo. I've always been more of a Luke fan. Um, growing up as a kid, I wanted to be Luke Skywalker. You know, when I first saw the, the, the very first movie, you know, you have this idea of I want to be like him. I want to be an adventurer. I want to go out into space. And um, so, yeah, I wanted to be Luke Skywalker. You know, not take down the entire empire, but, you know, have that adventure spirit. So I thought that with Solo, that's kind of where they were going to go. We were going to see how Han Solo became Han Solo. And I have to admit, I liked it. It wasn't a terrible movie. Um, it's one that I think I've probably seen maybe three times, three or four times. So not as much as the other ones. Um, it just lacked something. Like, it, it lacked the ability to capture me as much as even the prequels. They, like, they captured me. And I've seen those. Um, more than once, even though, you know, there's like two sides. Some people love the prequels. Some people don't even count the prequels when the debate happens as to which movies do you introduce first to someone who hasn't seen Star Wars. Do you start with the prequels or do you go straight for A New Hope? Well, um, I enjoyed it. Um, I do think that there were some things that probably could have been a little better, a little better explained. Um, but it, again, it's an origin story, and I love origin stories. Anything that shows like um, how they are, the way they are in the present, you know, it's like looking back and seeing. Oh, okay, now I see why, you know, Han Solo got the Millennium Falcon, how him and Chewie met, which was something very important uh, for me to see because I've I've read um, some stories that are technically non-canon, but um, everything going back to where Han Solo was actually in the Academy, Imperial Academy. And that's where he ran into Chewbacca and ended up rescuing him, and they became best friends. Um, something similar was done, though, in Star Wars Rebels. If you remember, um, there's a I – I, I can't even remember the episode, but they do rescue some Wookiees. And it just reminded me of that scene that I – I can't remember if it was a red – if I read it, it was a comic book, but whatever it was. I just remember that. Um so yeah, um, you know, Woody Harrelson was a cool character, kind of, you know, the inspiration for who Han Solo would become. I gotta say, Landau Calrissian had to be the, I guess, best character of that movie. I think he just shined immensely, and a lot more than Han himself, which was kind of sad, because the movie was about Han Solo, but I felt it was more of a... Uh, hey, everyone, this is Lando Calrissian, um, who I just, I really liked, you know. Anyways, so that's my short ranking on, oh, well, actually about Han Solo, but um, Rogue One. Rogue One, loved it. Like, immediately really, really liked it. Um, obviously, the ending, you know, just solidified it for me to be able to see how the plans got into Leia's hands, and that cuts right into A New Hope. But bringing back Tarkin, that was that was also cool. I wasn't expecting that. So I'm glad that, you know, it wasn't one of those spoiler things where, you know, hey, by the way, they'd used some kind of CGI, you know. Even when we saw Leia, I just thought it was going to be, you know, like a double just wearing her outfit. 
But when I saw her face and say hope, I I lost it. I I thought that was that was great. Um, you know, we go to Jeddah. We have, I mean, all the characters were really rich. They all belonged. You know, like they all had to do something with that story. And um, so, if I were to put, if I had to choose, which one would I see first? It would definitely be Rogue One. Um, not that I hate solo i just think rogue one for me was a a better story and um i i really just enjoyed every aspect of it you know again seeing the creation of the death star seeing the origins of the death star um you know darth vader on mustafar and this like cool ass you know uh i don't know could we call it a castle or hangouts you know fortress of solitude at the dark side i don't know i thought that was pretty cool and of course you know, him taking out all those rebels when uh, when he's trying to get the plans, that was pretty freaking awesome. Let, let's just come on. Um, so it had, I mean, both movies had some really good aspects to them. Um, but for me, if I had to choose one or the other to take with me on a desert island, it would definitely be Rogue One. So that's my standalone ranking. And when I come back, we're going to do the ranking of my favorite Star Wars movies. And... Uh, yeah, all this leading up to, of course, the premiere of Rise of Skywalker, which is happening uh, actually right now as I speak somewhere in, uh, in the United States of America. People are watching Rise of Skywalker. So come back, stay tuned, and may the Force be with you.